Hi guys, we're back with a new video and this will be a fun one. Last summer I promised my two nephews that we will be making a game together. So the deal was that they create all the graphics, come up with the idea for the game and uh, I will just code it, put it all together. So we're finally here uh, to create this game and uh, I want to show you and let you be a part of the process. It will be a web-based game and the type of game that they wanted was like a Super Smash Brothers clone. So we will make like a very simple Super Smash Brothers. So let me show you the dependencies that we will be using. So the first dependency we'll be using is Preact CLI. And that's just to easily set up a new Preact project. And Preact is like uh, React, but uh, a little bit more lightweight. I think I will do more uh, walkthroughs about uh, Preact in the future. Uh, but for now, just know that I will be using it for this because for me, it's like the simplest uh, way to start a new web project. So that's why I'm using it. And the main one is for the graphics with, where I will be using Pixie.js. That's uh, all for uh, the rendering of the game. And then I found uh, this four-year-old uh, dependency called Gridlike, uh, which uh, seems like uh, what we want. Um, it seems like it's perfect for creating a platformer which uh, Super Smash Brothers is like uh, similar to a platformer. So I think this is just enough uh, physics uh, for us to, to make it work, to feel like uh, Super Smash, but let's see. Uh, and uh, the final one is called Key Drown, which I will be using for the keyboard controls for the, the player character. So the idea is that we can use the keyboard for some characters and then in the future we'll use a gamepad or a joystick for other characters. But we'll start with keyboard because that's the simplest one, especially in a browser. I will split this uh, walkthrough up in uh, several parts um, just to make the videos a little bit shorter and easier to follow along. And in this first one, we will set up Pixie.js and Preact. And we will create all the shapes and physics for the platformer and uh, the keyboard controls for the player. So, let's get started. Code with Victor. Code with Victor. Okay, first of all, we're going to set up a new project. Uh, I like to do it in my folder called Projects. And we're going to set it up like this. So, uh, let's see, Impex, Preact, CLE, Create. And I'm not using the default uh, template. I'm actually using the simple template. It's a little bit, um, well, you can see here, it's the simplest possible Preact setup in a single file. So I don't really need all the bells and whistles. Uh, and let's call it, oh, I forgot to mention this. Uh, the name of the game will be Fight Smash. And I like to use Jarn. Uh, so let's get started. So now it's installing all the dependencies. Uh, I added uh, Jarn uh, in the end here because I prefer Jarn to NPM, but you can use NPM if you'd like. It doesn't really matter. It's just a personal preference for me. I like Jarn more. So uh, now it's installing. Right, so now everything is installed. Uh, so let's enter uh, this uh, repository, or sorry, uh, this uh, folder. You can see um the every file okay i don't have tree command installed never mind <laughs> but you can see the files here we have uh, node modules package and jarn lock and then in, uh, we have a source um, folder as well and actually going to uh, initiate the git repository here great and let's enter it here um let's see our fight smash you see here the dependencies that we have here. And first of all, I'm going to just remove the service worker just for simplicity. I don't uh, need that for this. And uh, for linting, uh, maybe this is good enough, but I'm actually always using standard JS. So let's uh, use that here as well. So I'm removing uh, this and this. Here we go. 
and I want to install uh, standard JS like that. Here we go. And uh, let's see. So here's our files. We have an uh, assets index.js. Uh, we actually have a service worker file here. So since I'm not going to be using that, let's just uh, remove that for now. And we have, let's see our index file. Okay, so we have a hello world uh, app here. You can see if we run, um, run our linting here. Uh, and we can see that uh, it's uh, fixed to standard JS uh, style. Great. Let's run this and see what it looks like just to see that it works. Here we go. It looks like uh, it's working. So let's first of all set up all the resets that I like to do. So I uh, can remove this. Let's just set it to 10 pixels. And uh, like I showed you in a previous video, I always like to reset like this when I'm using CSS. It's a very simple way to, uh, to reset everything so I have full control. Uh, let's see here, order box, margin zero, padding zero. That's it. Uh, great, I think that's enough for now. So uh, let's install all these dependencies. Um, so we do like jarn add pixie.js, I believe it was. Yep, pixie.js. And this is called grid like. And this one is called, uh, well, key drown. So those are the dependencies that we're going to be using. So let's install those. And um, first of all, let's just set up our pixie.js screen. Uh, so let's see how we do that. Mm. Let's just see one of their demos to see how they do it. Oh, that wasn't actually a code demo. Here we go, basic usage. Okay, this is what we wanted. Uh, so let's create a component for this first. So uh, source components, let's call it game canvas, maybe. So if we create this in a separate component to the main app component, then, um, then we can uh, use the app component for UI and stuff like, we probably want a main menu later. So let's call it game canvas. And let's return using um, maybe just a uh, div is enough here. Return. Right. And we want some style for this. So game canvas module CSS. And let's create that file. Game canvas module CSS. Uh, let's call div wrapper maybe. Great, and let's import it here. Game canvas, um, components, game canvas, right? Okay. So uh, one thing I want to do here, because I know the canvas will be, um, well, it will be a canvas <laughs> element, and I want this to be a block so we don't have any extra margin. Actually, I can show you how it would look like. So let's create this. Um, so we only want to create the, the Pixie application uh, once, once this uh, mounts this component. So let's do that in a, a, a effect hook. So you can do like this in Preact. So use effect and no dependencies since we want to do it on mount. So let's see, uh, we have the app here. Oh, I need to import Pixie, of course. And let's see. So I want the reference to this div here. So um, let's call it base. So I'm using uh, the ref uh, hook here. A base ref. Okay, now we should have a reference to that. So let's see here. Uh, base ref current uh, append child app dot u. 
Okay, so hopefully we get a canvas here now. Let's see, it's loading. There we go, a canvas. Uh, great. Uh, but you can see here that the canvas is uh, right now, we will make it 100% uh, with an height, but for now it's 600 pixels. But you can see with the wrapper is actually, uh, so you can see uh, down here that the canvas is 600, but the wrapper is actually, uh, well, it's full width, but for the height, you can see it's 602. And that's because uh, it will be some uh, white space here because this is a canvas is an inline element. So there's some white space there. So if I just make it a block, uh, then you can see that the wrapper is now 600. So that's what we want. We don't want uh, any additional margins because when it's 100% height and it's two pixels more than if you scroll, then you can actually scroll two pixels, but we don't want it to scroll at all. Uh, so let's see. Um, now let's make sure that it's the correct size. So I believe we can send the size in. Let's see here. Yeah. Okay, that's correct size, great. And I believe there's a app resize, let's see. Uh, yeah, there is. So uh, because we know that, I want to make sure that if we resize here, that uh, the game is resized as well. So let's create a, a on resize event here like that uh, and even the listener resize on resize and we want on uh, unmount to remove this listener so we, we don't get a bunch of listeners that uh, that's not needed so app resize i believe it's like this let's see if this works uh, no it does not Let's see if we actually call this. Yeah, we do. Um, okay. Let's see how we're supposed to do this. Actually, it might be a part of the renderer. Yeah, okay, that was it. So now it looks like getting the correct size. Okay, good start. So let's uh, start creating some characters. So let's define them out here. So let's see, characters. Eventually we will send this in, but for now just create them here. So I'll create like, let's see what we call it, character from maybe entities. So this could be, you can have different entities maybe. So, um, uh, let's see, let's create that entities character. Oops, entities character, right? Character, great. And we can send this in here characters, character. So I'm thinking that we can send this as props and then we can um, let's see here add these here so let's do another effect when character changes uh, let's see okay so the character could have so what I'm thinking here is that we have a, a character entity and the character entity will have uh, like a pixie JS node uh, which will be uh, the visuals, the render uh, for the, that character or that player. And they would also have um, a grid-like uh, rectangle that we can uh, uh, define in this uh, function. But let's start just with the graphics. So let's just create a node here. I believe we can do from a, uh, like this, from a white texture. Let's see if this works. Um, 
Let's see if we get an error. No, we don't get an error. So, so far it works. Great. And let's create like a setup function. I think that could be good. Where we want the parent, uh, the parent node to add it to. Let's call it parent node, maybe. And uh, okay, so parent node, and I think it's add side. Let's see if this works. Uh, here we want to loop uh, all the characters to set them up, set up. And we'd like to add it to, oh, we need a reference to app. So let's do this app ref. And we can just, right after creating it, let's set the app reference. So app ref current stage. Okay, cool. We have a small uh, node here, a white node. So we're getting somewhere. Uh, but I'd actually like, Instead of just adding it to stage immediately, maybe we want to have like a camera or yeah, let's make like a camera node here. Like um, I'm thinking like a container. So uh, camera could be a container. Let's see if that's how you do it. Pixie container, uh, yeah, looks like it. And camera ref equals camera. And let's just add that camera to our, uh, let's do like this, app stage add child camera. And then instead of the stage here, we can just add it to our camera. And that way we can move around our camera, which we want to do uh, later, obviously, when the characters are moving, we want to be able to move the camera. And let's just make sure that the stage is centered because now the zero point is up here, but let's make sure that it's always centered so that when I uh, resize, that we know that uh, the stage is always centered. So let's see here. Um, Stage, can I do like this? Let's see if this works. Uh, App.stage, obviously. Yeah, okay, so that's what we wanted. We want to change the width to height here. And now if we resize, nothing happens, but let's make sure that it does like this. Okay, so now the stage is always centered. Great. Uh, let's set some uh, width for this one. Okay, great. Um, okay, so and another thing that we can see that uh, the sprites anchor point will be up here, but let's make sure that the anchor point is here. So this will be the center part because that's uh, how grid like works. So we can do that like this, I believe. Yeah, you can see, oops, you can see that it moved. And why? Okay, so now it's perfectly centered. Uh, great, so that's our character like that. And let's create our first platform. Platforms. Oh, platforms, platforms, platforms. And they can maybe have set up as well. And let's add it to dependencies if they change. Oh, right. So now uh, every time characters or platform changes, we call setup again. Uh, so we keep adding this child, but probably we only want to add it once. So let's just check if we have a parent. Um, I wonder if you can just check for parent. Yeah, that should be it. So. If we already have a parent, we don't need to add it. So let's see, if we don't have a parent, then add it. Okay, great. So now we need uh, the platform entity as well. So let's see, let's create it here. Uh, source entities platform. 
platform. Okay, so now the platforms are uh, the same size. Let's uh, actually send in the x, y, and width. x, y, width, height. I think that's good. So, um, actually, let's not send in the, the width and height. Let's just set a width and height because uh, for width and height, since I have the graphics uh, already created um, from uh, my nephews, then the height will be the same as as uh, it is in the graphics. So let's just add X and Y. So the Y could be maybe uh, at 200. And let's, I don't know the, the size yet, but let's just say something. Maybe it could be 200, 250. And uh, X should be X, Y should be Y. There we go. So now we have our character and our platform. Maybe change for now, before we have colors, maybe just set some color, maybe red. I think we can do it like that. Maybe not, maybe just tint. Yeah. So now we can see our platforms are red. Uh, let's just add another platform so we can move between them. Um, let's see, maybe like that. Okay, great. Now we have platforms. Now we have uh, the graphics here. Um, and you know what? Let's actually create a second character and maybe send in X and Y in these as well. So we have character and this could be at zero. This one could be at 100 maybe. Or yeah, over that platform. This one is over this platform. Uh, cool. So now we have um, now we have the graphics kind of. <laughs> so this is just the temp graphics. Uh, this will be changed to the actual images later. Uh, but for now, just uh, to start uh, testing, this is good enough. So now we're going to use this grid like. Um, so let's see how we can set this up. So if we go back to this file, let's import grid like um, all right let's see what happens if I do like this I remember that when I tried this before it was a little bit strange because yeah it doesn't really work like that so this is a very old uh, dependency so I'm not sure if I recommend it but I found that it works uh, nicely for what I'd like so I think actually what we want to do, um, let's check the dependency, grid likes, and see what we get. Get a dist and grid. So let's import that, see what happens now. We still get an error. Okay, now we don't get an error. Let's see here, grid like. I remember that I think this doesn't work. Let's see, we get the empty one, but we want actually to get a create world. Let's see if we get that function. No, that's undefined. But I think we get it on window, which is a bit strange. Yeah, we do. <laughs> so we get the we get create world on our global window instead. So that's uh, very bad. But <laughs> for now, let's just go with it. Uh, sometimes in uh, development, you just have to go with what works. So let's create similar to how we created our app here. Let's create our uh, physics world. Um, physics world. Let's do some comments here. Um, so world, create world. Uh, great. Um, so now we want to uh, we want to add this to our ticker. So I know that uh, Pixie.js has like a ticker for uh, for uh, up, uh, updates. So let's see. Okay. 
at ticker dot add. Wonder if can we actually remove as well? Let's see here. So there's an add add once and remove. Okay, that, so that's what we want. So we have an on resize. Let's have on one on update, and then we get the delta here. So let's add on update and remove on update when we unmount. Uh, right, can remove that. Let's see if we get the delta here. Okay, so you can see the delta is actually a bit different in Pixie.js than what you might be used to. So uh, usually the delta is uh, visualized in seconds or milliseconds, like the milliseconds since the last update. But here it's um, like, I'm not sure how I can explain it, but you can see that it's uh, one almost every time. So it tries to just uh, handle the differences. So if you write a game without using delta at all, uh, and then you just add the pixie.js delta, which is almost always one, then it will uh, work um, without changing much of your code, which is kind of nice, uh, but it will still be the correct um, value. So if, um, for instance, you have some lag in your game, then you know that if you, uh, if you multiply by this delta, then, uh, then it doesn't matter that you get some lag, you will still get the correct results. But we can see in grid like it actually wants us to send in uh, the millisecond delta. And I do believe we can get that by delta milliseconds, maybe. Or actually, you can see here that it wants the seconds. Sorry, that was actually seconds since it's zero point uh, the milliseconds. You can see here, there we get the uh, milliseconds. I wonder if we can get the seconds as well. Delta time, delta. Okay, I don't think we can. So let's just we split uh, divide this by a thousand, then we get this. So you can see that the the second delta we get is actually zero point zero sixteen. And the example here is actually 0 0.016. So that worked out perfectly. Uh, so let's just uh, do like this. And we send in this second delta to our world here. And well, nothing happens, obviously, because we haven't actually added our entities. But let's do that. So we can see here that for uh, the example here, they have an entity, which um, we can use the same for our player. And then they have uh, a ground. So the difference here is that you can see the level here. Let's see, level one means it can get affected by entities with a level inferior to one strictly. So if we set level one to entity and level zero on the ground, then this will uh, get affected by the ground at least. So. Let's start with the, or actually, let's start with the player entity. So we go to our character here. Uh, we want to create our entity and the X and Y we already have. And the width will be, let's set it here. So our size is 50, size, or actually use width and height maybe. Width height we have width height and level one okay great so now in our setup we can send in maybe our world as well so uh, uh, let's see oh actually we probably needed word a uh, world here right um okay so maybe we move this creating our entity to here instead uh, actually, we don't need a reference to it, I think. Let's just do like that. So here we go. Or uh, wait, we probably need a uh, reference to it when we move it later. So now we have the entity there. We need to send in our world. Let's add a reference to that, similar to that. World ref 
create our world reference and there we go world reference world great so now we ha have our entity but um we still won't see anything obviously because we need to update to uh, update our pixie js um pixie.js node to have the same x and y as this one so let's see here let's have an uh, update function and here we can use delta maybe and um, let's see how we do this let's see so we get the delta here at least i think maybe we should move this on update to uh, to down here where we have the latest characters and platforms instead so if we do like that remove that and and let's see here so maybe we should actually maybe we should have an update and a render i think that could be better actually so we have a render and in the a render we just want to set our node position to the same as the entity position so if we have an update we can call the uh, the updates before we simulate everything so we can in the update maybe we can get uh, character inputs and stuff like that so let's call uh, update and then we can call a render okay um let's see what happens now okay nothing happens because we are not actually moving the entity so let's just set uh, let's set the entity's uh, gravity want to move down hmm still not um oh delta is not called let's see probably missed something here oh we get some error ah i missed this character okay cool app is not defined uh, so here i like to do uh, use the standard to easier find my errors so we can see a create world is not defined that's fine. We this is a global variable, and then let's see. World is not defined on row sixty one. Right. We want this world, the world reference and app reference, and down here as well. Okay, everything looks good now, so it should work here. Okay, great. Oh, now you can see that it moves. Um, okay, great, so we have uh, gravity. Uh, let's see, maybe gravity should always add up. So let's set a gravity variable here. Uh, gravity times delta. So it moves faster and faster. Okay, that looks good. Now we want it to connect to the ground here. So let's um, redo a lot of things here. Actually, the ground probably won't be moving, so we don't need the render and update. So let's just, um, in our setup, do like this and we'll be level zero. Let's see, we have the width and height. Let's do a similar thing here with height. Like that. With height. Uh, we need to send in world here as well. Okay, cool. Now we can see that it actually connects here. Um, great. Okay, so now that we have the physics and some basic rendering, and let's uh, do our controls as a final thing. 
So I think controls, since we want to be using, let's go back to our index here. We want to be using different kinds of controls for uh, different characters. You can play multiple players. Uh, so let's make that, let's see, keyboard controller. Let's make that a separate function that we can send in. So controllers, maybe keyboard controller. Uh, we can send this in here, keyboard controller. Um, let's see here, controllers. Uh, let's make that a function. There we go. And here we want to use key drown. And uh, the reason for this is like it says here, um, that if you use key down and key up, then you get a bit weird events for uh, gaming at, at least. So we want to check that, uh, for instance, if we use WASD for movement, we want to check that uh, it always moves to the right if uh, uh, the D is uh, pressed. So let's see here how we do this. Maybe this should have an update as well. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's enter the character. A controller. Maybe we should have a setup here as well. Uh, let's see if we actually have a controller. We can set it up. Setup. Um, okay. So now we want. Uh, maybe we can have a shared state here. So let's have a state for our character and. Let's see, uh, we can have a X speed and we'll move to X speed times delta. And hmm, I wonder if we need a setup. Let's see. Uh, if, let's see, KD, key drown. Let's call it KD here as well, like they do in the example. So if KD dot, D is down. And we can set state X speed to one. Let's see if that works. And let's reset it every time. And then we can update our controller. Controller update delta. Okay. X speed is not defined. Oh. We need to get it from the state, so of course. Oh, we need a setup because we need to send in the state. Character state. Or maybe we can just send in the state to the update, actually. Let's remove the setup for now. Uh, state. That should work. Hmm. If it's down, then we set it to one, but we reset it to zero every time. But it keeps moving faster and faster, it seems. Let's see, what did I do wrong here? Let's print state. Oh, right. It should be like that. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so maybe we need also like a speed here. Let's see, times state at speed. Let's see what's a good speed. Oh, a lot faster than that. Let's make it 100. Yeah, that was a little bit better. Okay, now we want it to be for the other way as well. A. Maybe do like this, minus and plus. So if we hit both, then we stand still. Okay, cool. Uh, let's make that a little bit funner to play. It's very rigid right now. So instead of just setting the X speed here, let's add to it. So maybe 
So what I'm thinking here is we want to have some like uh, slowing down, like um, because this doesn't feel really very natural. So instead of resetting every time, let's do like this. So we can, I don't know, something like that, make it slower each time. Oh, wait, just like that. Oh, Delta, that's what we wanted. <laughs> Uh, let's see, let's see, maybe that was a bit quick. Well, okay, so we maybe need a max speed here. So, oh, we want to use delta here as well. Let's see. So, um, so for when A is down, we want the minimum speed to be, say, one, oh, sorry, minus one. So if we use max here, then minus one, and then state x speed minus like that. And the opposite here, the max should be one and add to it. Let's see how that looks. Look, much more natural movement. Okay, cool. So the next thing is we want to jump. Um, Let's see how we do that. Maybe we want to set in our state here, jump. And if, let's see, if state is jump. So we want, for jump, we want to just do it when we press the key. And so maybe here we need uh, the setup function actually. So let's do like this, if controller, uh, if controller, then um, setup. We can send in state. So we reset jump if it's set, but here we can, uh, let's see, setup. Since press, we need to use uh, these press functions or um, we need to set it up like this instead of in our update. So um, let's see. So that's why I wanted to have separate that we can set state jump and then uh, reset jump. So if we here set state uh, jump, then we know that the next time it will it updates, then. Uh, we know that jump has been set. We have hit the, the well, it's not the space bar, it's the W. Um, and we can uh, do something with that. So let's just see that it gets called. Yeah, you can see it only gets called once even though I hold down the button now. So that's great, that's what we wanted. And let's see, we get it here, jump. Yeah. Cool. So for jump, you can see we have our velocity y here. So just set it to velocity jump. Maybe maybe we can have that as state as well. Jump, uh, jump uh, force. Let's see. Maybe this is way too much. Let's see what happens. <laughs> well, it obviously wasn't too much. Oh, it needs to be opposite, of course. Okay, uh, definitely wasn't too much. <laughs> let's see, okay, well, that was too much. So let's see, 500, the middle ground. Still a bit much. Well, I don't really know how high the jump should be yet, but I think maybe that looks good. Maybe the gravity could be a little bit bigger. Ah. You can sit here forever and change these values. Okay, now we have something here. But you can see that we can just keep jumping forever. And that's not really what we want. So for now, just make sure that we can only jump uh, once uh, when we hit the ground. So to do that, we can, let's see, if Entity, I believe they have something like, yeah, has down contact. 
but this is an interesting one because I found this when I tried previously that uh, that uh, actually in uh, this grid like the the let's see the y axis is uh, reversed to pixie.js so in pixie.js it's like it renders so the the y and x axis is at the top so zero is at the top and then it goes down so the the higher the y uh, the lower it gets on the screen but for grid like it's the opposite and what that's that means is that they have a variable called has down contact but actually we want the opposite so we want to have has up contact i think <laughs> so let's see if this works i'm pretty sure it's like this yeah so now i can see i hit it multiple times but it only jumps um, when i hit the ground so maybe the last thing could be just to have a double jump because do they have that in Super Smash? I think they do. Anyway, let's uh, do it for us. So how should we do this? Maybe we can count the amount of jumps. Amount jumps zero. Let's see if it has contact, we set the state amount jumps to. Let's see. Then we are jumped once. Um, Else, if state amount jumps equals one, and we also want it to jump. Um, is this correct? Okay, now we have the double jump. Let's see. But I want to be able to, I think, so we can double jump here, but I want it to be able to uh, jump when I uh, left the platform. So, so let's see, let's um, check here. If entity has up contact, then we need to reset these jumps. So, um, Maybe like this. Or wait, we can set it to one maybe. So as long as we have up contact um, and we don't have contact, we don't need to actually add gravity uh, once uh, we're in, we have this contact here, I think. Empty. Let's see. Oh, now we can't jump at all. We can set some value here. Um, hmm. Okay, I missed something up here. Uh, if it has up contact, let's see, has up contact, true. Oh, wait, of course. Um, okay, maybe we can do like that. Okay, now it looks like what we wanted. Can you just jump once? There, double jump. But if we fall down, then we jump once. Okay, that looks like what we want. Maybe if we move this to above here. Because I want to set this to a uh, low value so that this doesn't keep um, going up. So when you move down, then you get the is super high gravity so that's what i'm after here maybe this will work okay okay cool that works okay so um, now we have the base for our platformer we can move around we can jump and um, 
And yeah, I think that should be enough for uh, this part. So uh, see you next time. Uh, take care. <laughs>